Okay, then let's start. Um, so last time we were doing this exact equations and uh, when it is not exact, uh, we introduce integrating factor. In this case, integrating factor can, it, it may not be easy to find out. Uh, so what we do is, let me recall here if, um, this function is the function of x. Remember, m and n are the coefficients of the um, coefficient functions of the differential equation. And if this ratio is a function of x only, then you can find the integrating factor by this formula here, mu. And you multiply the whole equation by mu, and the equation becomes exact, then you solve it. And similarly, if this one here is a function of y, then you have um, an integrating factor as a function of y only here. And again, you multiply with mu the equation and it becomes exact and solved. That was the procedure we followed last time. Um, so, well, today we're gonna move to chapter seven. Um, this is what we do in this course. Uh, we first do some uh, first order linear differential equations and nonlinear ones, and then move to um, linear algebra part, do some linear algebra because uh, we will do, we will solve the systems of differential equations. That means we will have many differential equations and we will solve them at the same time using some linear algebra. Then we will return to uh, the previous chapters and using this knowledge from uh, systems of differential equations, you will solve higher order uh, differential equations, for instance, second order, third order differential equations using the systems, okay? So today we will move to chapter seven and we will review some uh, basic linear algebra, all right. Okay, then let's um, start to new chapters. This is lecture six. And here is chapter seven, which is systems of um, First order linear differential equations. Okay. Well, what do I mean by uh, system of differential equation? Let me explain this. So we have uh, some functions. Suppose that x1, x2, xn, these are functions. They are functions of t, are functions of t, t is the variable, x1 is a function, x2 is another function. Um, then a set of n differential equations. of the form 
Well, we have the following. So for instance, x1 prime, that means the x1 derivative of x1 is given by uh, all other functions plus the variable. So it's gonna be a function of multivariable function of x1, x2, xn, and t, okay? And the derivative of the second function, x2, is another function, f2, of multivariable, this is a multivariable function again, x1, x2, xn, and t, okay? And you go like this, and finally you have derivative of xn is fn, x1, x2, xn, and t. So this is called a system of differential equations. Let me give an example of a basic system of linear differential equation. Well, x1, let's say, it's a function of t, x1, t. x2 is um, it's another function of t. And the system of equation, a system of differential equation is given by this. linear differential equations uh, let's write this x1 prime is equal to 2 x1 plus x2 and uh, x2 prime is equal to x1 plus 2x2. Um, well, let's also give the initial values. x1 at 0 is equal to 5, and x2 at the origin is equal to 1. So this is the initial value problem. We have the initial values. And it's a system. We have two functions in this uh, system, x1 and x2. And we have the system of linear differential, first order differential equations. Later, we will learn how to solve this type of differential equation. This is a quite simple um, equation. But right now, let's skip that part. And you can check that it's an exercise for you. Okay. x1 t, when you take x1 t as this, 3 times e to the 3 t plus 2 times e to the t. And uh, x2 t three times e to the 3 t minus 2 times e to the T, okay, um, this is a solution. Solution to this IVP. Initial value problem, okay. Uh, what you do is basically you find the derivative of x1, okay? You take the derivative of this function and plug in here and put x1 as well, x2 as well, and check that we have this equality, okay? And similarly for x2 bar, we check this, okay?
Again, we will learn how to find x1 and x2 in this example later. Right now, uh, let's assume that these are the solutions. Uh, okay, there's one question. Is it a partial derivative? Um, no, it's not. Uh, it, it's not a partial derivative. Well, you, it's not partial derivative, but still you can model many things uh, from this. Um, um, for instance, uh, remember the Newton laws, it's like, you what you model with this there are many things you, you can model this there are many examples in the book let me give one of those let's say you have one mass and another mass here okay and these are attached to each other like that okay and you pull it in that way and there is another force here okay so um well, what you do is basically remember um, the total force is equal to m times a, right? So here, let's say f1 and here f2. So basically from this, you get an equation like um, total force uh, f1 is equal to m times, let's say m2. Um, Oh, it's vice versa. It's M1 and M, M2 and M1, sorry. M1 and M2. Right? So it's going to be uh, the, the acceleration, right? DV1. Et, for instance, right? Uh, derivative of the velocity in the first one, and this is given by f two is equal to m times dv two dt. So basically, uh, you have two functions here, okay, and two differential equations, and you solve it together. So it's a system of a linear differential equation. So you solve it together, okay? So this is just an example and there are many examples you can find uh, in the book, all right? Okay, good. Uh, we will not do this modeling here, um, but as I said, many examples can be found in the book. Okay, let's, um, so to solve this uh, sort of uh, linear differential systems, uh, we need to use some linear algebra uh, matrices and some uh, related stuff. So let's um, review this linear algebra. Uh, I hope you are familiar with some of those at least, but we will cover anyway. Uh, quickly. Uh, so some review. Of linear algebra. So if you don't understand some notions here, I will uh, you could please stop me and ask because I may go a little bit fast here. Um, so please slow, uh, slow me. Okay, slow, slow down me because uh, I assume that you are familiar with some of those. So I will, I will be um, fast in this part. Well. Let's take a matrix and M by N matrix. A of real numbers 
what's the metric? So I, I'm I will define this now um, of real numbers. is a rectangle array of uh, real numbers so basically uh, let me give a notation here uh, we will uh, write a matrix like this a, let's say, denotes uh, our matrix, A11, A12, A1n. This is the row, the first row of the matrix. Let's write the second row, A21, A22, and A2n. And you go like this and uh, the empt row am1, am2, and amn. So it's it's an m by n matrix. Okay, so we um, write like this m by n. That means we have m row and n column. Okay, so here, for instance, uh, this is a column. It is the second column, okay? Column of this matrix, okay? And what's the row here? Um, for instance, this is here, the first row, okay? It's the first row. first row of this matrix. And it's an M by N matrix. That means we have M rows and columns. And we denote this also by, there are different notations, A, I, J. M cross N. Uh, or you simply write A, M cross N. These are all notations, okay? All right. Um, now let's talk about complex numbers quickly. Then we will consider matrices with complex entries. So what is a complex number? Well, this is the complex plane. It is the set of complex numbers. So these are the, this is the set of numbers like this, A plus um, I, B. Here, A and B are real numbers. A and B are real. And I is the notation. Basically, it's squares up to minus one. Okay. And here A is called the real number. So maybe let's write this notation. Usually we will denote this by Z, okay? The complex number by Z. And A here, A is the real part of Z. And B is the imaginary part of Z, okay, real part, imaginary part, and the modulus of Z is given by A square plus B 
square in root. This is the modulus of C. Okay. Um, the C conjugate here is basically A minus B I. So let me maybe do the picture here and see this with the geometry. Let's say this is my z here okay so it's the x-axis a and here we have b the modulus is basically uh, the distance from this point to the origin so it's this and this is basically the z modulus okay the length um, the conjugate, you can see the conjugate here. It's somewhere here. It minus B. Okay. So this is Z bar conjugate. Any question so far? Is everything clear? Well, we will do some operations with matrices like real numbers. So what we do is we basically uh, sum up and multiply by a constant a matrix. They are the easy operations. We, we can also uh, multiply two matrices, um, but this is not uh, similar as in uh, the case of real numbers. So we have to be careful with the product. Uh, but sum and difference are same. Um, so basically you sum up the matrices with uh, summing up the entries of the matrices, okay? So matrix operations, let's talk about this. All right. Right, so Kubra asked this modulus is the distance from the origin. Yes, the distance of Z from the origin. Right, right. Um, so matrix operations. So let's take A. It's a matrix M by N matrix, okay? And B is also M by n. So basically these are the matrices of same size. Okay. They they both have m columns, m rows, and n columns. Okay. So what is a plus b? A plus b is basically uh, you sum up the entries. Okay. So it's going to be the matrix with entries which are which comes from the uh, sum of the entries of the original matrix. So AIJ plus BIJ, uh, it's a matrix M by N. Okay, so the summing up is easy. Um, Uh, there's one question, what is the plane for distance from? Well, th this plane is, you can think of uh, R2, okay? So it's like, uh, this is the X axis, this is the Y axis, okay? So it's basically A, B here, you can think of like that, and this is zero, zero. So the distance between these two points is basically A square plus, B square in root, okay? All right, um, so, the, so the sum of two matrices is easy. You sum up the entries and multiply by a constant, it's also easy. So, well, you can also do this with difference, A minus B like that. 
and you multiply a matrix by a constant C, it's simply um, the matrix with entries like this, C times A, I, J, this matrix, okay? Um, M cross M. Here C is a real number or complex number, let's say in general. C is any complex number. Okay, there's one question here. Uh, we consider this complex number in the complex plane, but you can think of complex plane as uh, real uh, as R2. You can identify C with R2. How do you identify this? It's like A plus IB corresponds to AB, okay? So when we draw the picture, we uh, draw this picture is in the real plane, okay? Uh, otherwise, uh, we cannot uh, imagine the complex plane, okay? All right. Um, well, let's talk about the product of two matrices. So product. So this, this is addition. Addition of two matrices. And this is um, product by scalar, scalar here, C, or multiplication by a scalar. By a scalar. Okay, so these are easy operations. Let's talk about the product of matrices or uh, multiplication. All right, let's take two uh, matrices like this, A. Now, in order to multiply two matrices, we need a condition here. Um, first of all, A must be like this, A by J. It's an M by N matrix. And B here, must be like this b i j it's an n by k matrix so basically you see here these two numbers are the same okay that means basically uh the number of columns in a is equal to the number of rows in b okay So you take two matrices with this uh, number of um, columns. In A is equal to number of rows in B. In that case, only in that case, you can multiply two matrices, okay? So um, the resulting matrix will be this A times B is equal to C here. C is, I will define what C is now. How do you find this? The C, C is what? C is like, what you do is you, drop this, the same number here, the common number here, N, and it's an M by K matrix, okay? So it becomes an M by K matrix. So in the product, you have M columns and M rows and K columns, okay? So what are these numbers here, C, I, J? Let's write this. 
where C I J is given by It looks complicated, but in practice it is not. I will do some examples, don't worry, okay? So it is A I L times B L J. And here L is from one to N. Okay. And similarly, um, or you can write this as the following. What is this? What does it represent here? This represents basically you take the ith row of A, okay, which is this A I one. A I and so this is the i row, and it's a vector and you take the jade column of b and you take the dot product of this two this is uh, the J column, so it's going to be B1. Okay. Uh, J and B and J. This is now um, the J column. of B, okay? And it's a dot product here. And this exactly gives the, the sum here, okay? So what you do is basically you take this one, multiply with that one. And then you take the next one, multiply with this one, and then you sum up all these numbers, okay? And finally, you take this one and this one, multiply this two and sum up. So you get the sum, all right? This is the multiplication of two matrices. Uh, let's do uh, some examples. Um, take this uh, matrix one minus one three four zero one. It's a two by three matrix. It's two by three. Okay, um, and we multiply this with. There's, uh, with a three by two matrix. So it's going to be zero, one, two, minus two, zero, minus one. Okay. So we multiply this with a three by two matrix. Without doing the work here, we can say that the resulting matrix will be what? It's what is the dimension of the resulting matrix here? Can you tell me? So we will get some like two by two. Two by two. Okay, great. So it's going to be a two by two matrix. Uh, we simply drop right this and this one, and it's going to be two by two. Okay, at the end. But let's find this out. What is this multiplication? Um, 
So it's going to be equal to, well, for the first entry here, here, okay, what we do is we take this one and that one and take the dot product, okay? This is the first row, first row of the matrix. So you take the first row here, one minus one, three, okay? First row and the first column. So that product gives you what? It's basically, one times zero plus minus one times one plus three times two. This is the uh, one one entry, right? Entry with one one. It's like one row one, column one. Now let's move to row one, column two. So this is row one and this is column one now we need row one column two so we will take instead of this one we take now that one to write the entry here okay the second column we move to the second column with with first row so you take this two and do the dot product the resulting will be um, what? One times minus two plus minus one times zero plus three times minus one. Okay. And we are done with the first row. Okay. So we're done with the first row. Now we will do this one, the second row, first column. So we will get rid of this. And we will work with the second row here, this one. The first column, so we will take here. Second row, first column, okay? We will use these two vectors. All right, let's do it. The dot product of these two vectors, four times zero, plus zero times one, plus one times two, okay? Well, um, now we move to the second column, so, we use now this one, second column, the second row and second column. So we write the entry here, okay. Let's see what we get. Four times minus two plus zero times zero plus one times minus one. So the resulting matrix is now two by two, as we guess at the beginning. And we get what we get. Let's simplify this. Zero minus one, it's five. Here, zero, zero, two. Zero minus, minus five. And this is minus nine, okay? It's a two by two matrix, right? Five minus one, five, two and minus nine. Any question with this example? Well, this is very important because you will use this later, uh, the product of matrices to solve the differential equation, okay? You will need it. All right, well, now let's talk about some spatial matrices. The, the first one is the identity matrix. Identity matrix is like this. It's 
its uh, matrix in this form. We have on the diagonal, we have only ones, okay? On the diagonal like this. And otherwise it is zero, everywhere else it's zero. It's like zero here, okay, zero here, zero here, okay. And let me put a big zero here, that means it's diagonal is one and everywhere else it's zero, okay? And we will, it's an n by n matrix. It's a square matrix. We call it square matrix like this, two by two, three by three. Okay, these are called square matrix. And uh, it is an n by n identity matrix, okay? This is the notation for the identity matrix, the capital I here like that. So what are the properties of identity matrix? Well, Identity is like identity in the real numbers. In the real numbers for multiplication, the identity is one. That means if you multiply a number by one, you get the same number, okay? And similar here, if you multiply a matrix by the identity matrix, you get the same matrix. So remark, any matrix for any matrix, um, you multiply, for short, we will write this by I n, okay? Let's multiply uh, any matrix with the identity matrix, but in order to multiply a matrix with identity matrix like this, the, mat the matrix must be in the form like this, n by some, any other number, let's say m, it's, a n by m, okay? And similarly, um, you multiply a matrix from right. So it's gonna be, let's write it um, m by n, and it becomes uh, A, M, by N, okay? By the way, the matrix multiplication is not commutative. You cannot change the orders, okay? First of all, the, the product may not be defined because of the dimensions. Even if it is defined, the product, it, might, it may not be same as the original one, okay? So when you change the order, in matrix multiplication, the resulting matrix will change most of the time, okay? So it's not like real numbers. In real numbers, two times three is equal to three times two. But in the space of matrices, A times B is not equal to B times A always, okay? Question, comment? Um, let's also talk about this definition. Let's define the transpose and adjoint, the first one here. The transpose of a, which is given by, let's say, A, I, J, M, N, is, you know, it's denoted by the following notation, A to T, T is for transpose. And um, what you do is basically, you change the roles of, columns and rows, okay? So you change the places of rows and columns. So rows becomes columns, columns becomes rows. And um, 
you get some like this a instead of a j i j here okay we will have j i because you replace rows with columns okay and it's going to be an n by m matrix let me give an example of it a quick example um let's say a is one two three four five six it's a two three by two matrix okay and it's transpose what you do is basically you take this row the first row becomes the first column so you write it like this one three five okay the first column becomes first row the second column here becomes the second row two four six and it's a two by three matrix okay clear well we have one more definition then we will give a break the adjoint of a is it's denoted by a star it's basically uh, you take the conjugate of the matrix that means you take the conjugate of each entries and then take the transpose of it okay well if it's a real matrix the conjugate will be same right the conjugate of a real number is same itself so it's basically the transpose but in the case of complex numbers it makes a difference so let me give an example so let's say uh, a is this one plus i two one minus i i what is the adjoint well the adjoint becomes basically so you take this row here and make it column and take the conjugate as well so it's going to be one minus i the conjugate of one plus i is one minus i the conjugate of one minus i is one plus i okay the conjugate of two is two so we move to this one the conjugate of i is minus i and we get that so this is the adjoint of a all right um, okay, let's give a break here. Do you have any question, comment? So in the second hour, we will talk about the determinant and uh, the inverse of the matrix. All right, let's give a break here for 10 minutes. So let's meet at um, 9.45.
All right, welcome back. Um, so let's continue with uh, matrices. Now we will um, talk about the inverse of a matrix and determinant. Okay, there's one question for that joint. Uh, do we take the conjugate and then take the transpose? You can do it in both ways. You can either take transpose then take the conjugate or you can take the conjugate then take the transpose. They will give the same thing, right? Okay, um, so let's talk about this invertibility. H. Mutability and determinant. Well, what's an invertible matrix? So a matrix is invertible if a matrix A M by N. Well, now um, we should say we can only talk about the inverse of a squared matrix, okay? Um, and by n matrix, okay, it's a square matrix, is yes. invertible if there exists a matrix, the inverse, like this. We will denote this matrix by a to the minus one. That means the inverse of A, such that A times this matrix, A to the inverse, is equal to the identity matrix. Well, for the product, I usually use, instead of this, I usually use uh, the dot here. It's the identity matrix. Okay, and similarly, it's equal to A minus one times A, okay? So basically, when you multiply a matrix with the inverse, okay, uh, you get the identity matrix. And the, in that case, you say the matrix is invertible, okay? And here, this is called the inverse of the matrix. inverse of A, all right? Well, not all matrices are invertible. We will give some examples later, but let me maybe um, write these questions. The first question is, when does the inverse exist? So when, does A inverse exist? Okay, well, so what are the conditions for this? Sufficient and necessary conditions. And second question, how, so in case of we have an inverse, how do you find that inverse, okay? So how do you find the inverse of the matrix? Do you find a inverse if it exists. Okay, so we have two basic questions. Uh, first, we will uh, concentrate on the first one, um, the conditions when uh, for the existence of the inverse 
of a matrix. To answer this question, we need to we need this notion of determinant. So let's talk about the determinant of a matrix. So to answer to question one. Question one, we need determinant of a matrix, okay? So determinant. Let's talk about it. What is a determinant? Well, the determinant is of a matrix A, or simply we write this, is a number. Computed with the entries of A. Well, that doesn't make too much sense. It's a very general definition, which doesn't say how to find this determinant, but let's write it simply. Um, it's a number computed with the entries of a okay but how do you compute this that's the question well in the case of let's start with the simplest simplest case n is equal to one that means we have one by one matrix one by one matrix is what it's basically a real number right so it's like this, a number here, and that's it, because it has one row, one column. That means it's a number, right? So in that case, the determinant of A is basically this number itself, okay? So for one by one matrix, it's simple, it's one by, what about two by two? Let's say we have n is equal to two and a is equal to, now it's two by two, two columns, two rows, a, b, c, d, like that, okay? Then in this case, the determinant is, it's defined by the following. What you do is you multiply these two and subtract the, the product of these two. Okay, so A times D minus B times C minus B times C. Okay, so this is the definition of the determinant when you have a two by two matrix. Well, this is still simple, right? It's just one line. Now it becomes complicated when you have more than, the dimension is greater than two, but still we can do something. When n is equal to, or maybe let's say n is bigger than or equal to three, let's say. Okay, well, in that case, how do you define the determinant? So let's say we have a matrix like this, A is given by um, the following matrix, um, A11, A12, A1n, okay? And um, a n one a n two a n n. So this is my matrix, original matrix. So what we do is um, here. Let me maybe 
right also somewhere here. Somewhere here we have we have the jade column. So it's gonna be A one uh, J. Okay. Similar here, A um, N J. This is the jade column. Yeah, you continue like this, okay? So what I do is um, now I cross this. I delete this column, jade column, and the first row. So you delete this, and it becomes an n minus one and minus one, right? It's a it's a matrix of n minus one by n minus one. So it's I will denote this by a one j. How do you obtain this matrix? This is basically the matrix. Delete by deleting uh, the first row and jade column. Okay. So dimension decreases by one. It's now n minus one by n minus one. So for instance, if you have a three by three matrix, original, the resulting matrix will be two by two, and you can find a determinant of two by two matrix easily, right? Here we have a formula for that. So what is the determinant of this? Now the determinant of A is basically the, it's given by the following formula, the sum of minus one to the J minus one times A one J times the determinant of this resulting matrix, the reduced matrix, okay? So it's determinant of A one J. So this formula is very useful. Uh, it may look confusing, okay, complicated, but it's not. We will do an example and you will understand this better. Okay, the question is what is the point of determinant? Well, determinant has many applications, like it's it measures some sort of volumes of three-dimensional objects. Okay. Um, remember in calculus, you use determinant um, to find the vector which is perpendicular to two, two vectors. Okay. So there are many applications, geometric applications of determinant. It measures many things uh, in many contexts, content, contents, but here um, determinant will uh, decide, uh, will, we, will, we will check the determinant to, uh, to decide whether a matrix is invertible or not, okay? Whether there is an inverse of a matrix or not. So that's the point of determinant uh, in this course. Uh, because the inverse of a matrix will be important to solve linear differential equations. For instance, when you have uh, a system of equation, you can write a system of equation like this. It is the matrix, n by n matrix. This is a vector, okay? And this is another vector. So if you know the determinant of A is non-zero, you can, later we will talk about this. In that case, you can find the inverse of a matrix and you can solve this by X is equal to A inverse times B, okay? Right? Um, so if you know that if the determinant of A is non-zero. So you see here in the case of non-zero determinant, um, we have a solution of this system. That's why the determinant is important in this in this course. Okay. 
Any other question or comment? All right, let's uh, continue this stuff. Well, determinant of a two by two matrix is easy. Determinant of a three by three matrix is slightly difficult, but it's not too difficult. You can still find the determinant of three by three matrix by hand. Determinant of a matrix four by four matrix now it's, it becomes uh, much more difficult because uh, four by four matrix will reduce to three by three and you need to apply the same formula to uh, find a determinant of three by three matrix. And um, there are, it's gonna be longer. You can still do it, but it's gonna be longer. And most of the time in this course, we will be dealing with at most, um, three by three matrices, okay? So don't worry about the higher uh, dimensions. Well, let's do an example. Let's um, look at this example. A here is Two zero minus two, three four five, one one minus eight. Okay, so let's find out the determinant of this matrix. Well, determinant of A is like what you do is we work with the first row here. Okay, here. We take first A11 when J is equal to one, okay? And uh, A11 is two, okay? So you take two first. We have here minus one to the J minus one. Here, when J is equal to one, it is zero minus one to the zero is one. So this goes like when J is equal to one, this is minus one to the zero plus one here j is equal to two and minus one to the one is minus one and it becomes plus here so it goes like plus minus plus so this term will determine the sign here okay the sign here plus minus plus all right so two times let's see what we get the reduced matrix so it's going to be you cover this one and that one, and the resulting matrix is four, five, one, minus eight. Instead of determined, I will use this notation, the, the two lines like that, okay, for simplicity. Um, so let's continue with now the second entry here. So I cover now this one okay so the resulting matrix is well basically is minus zero times you don't even need to write this because zero times something will be zero but let's for the first time let's write what is the resulting matrix uh three five uh one minus eight finally it is going to be plus uh, minus two times, let's um, cover the last one, the last column, three, four, one, one, three, four, one, one. Okay, any question so far? Well, the determinant of the first one here, it's you multiply this two, subtract this two, minus, so it's gonna be two times minus 32 minus five, minus zero, minus two times three minus four. Okay. Um, it's gonna be minus 72. 
Okay, minus 70. Any question with this computation? Is it all clear? All right, let's write this result, the theorem, which says basically a matrix is invertible if and only if um, its determinant is non-zero. So let's take a matrix um, A and a matrix, the matrix A n by n, a square matrix. Okay, we can only, only talk about the inverse of a square matrix. So you cannot talk about the inverse of two by three matrix. It's not square. Okay. And in the case of square matrix, the inverse exists has an inverse if and only if determinant of A for short, we will write like this is non zero, okay? Determinant is non zero. All right, any question with this? We will not prove this theorem. You can use it for free. Um, Does that work both ways? Like, can we say if the uh, determinant of a square matrix is non-zero, then can we say that there's definitely inverse of that matrix? Yeah, this is both way. If, if the determinant is non-zero, then there is an inverse. Okay, if there is an inverse, then determinant is non zero. You are saying this? Mm -hmm, yes. Yeah. If the determinant is zero, then there is no inverse. Okay. So this is an if and only if statement is like this. If you have this one inverse, then the determinant is non zero. And also this if the determinant is non zero, there is an inverse. Okay. All right, let's uh, write this remark here, some properties of uh, determinant. One, a determinant of the inverse matrix, if there is an inverse, it's one over the determinant of A. And second, um, determinant of a times B is equal to determinant of A times determinant of B. For the sum, we don't, we cannot split the sum, okay? We cannot say the determinant of A plus B is equal to determinant of A plus determinant of B, that's not true. But for the product, we have this. Well, so far we talk about the matrices of real numbers. We can also talk about matrices of functions. So let's talk about this. Um, so matrices of functions. Well, now the entries will be functions instead of constants. So, uh, what we have here is like we have A is now a matrix and its entries are um, functions, not constants. So we will denote this by A of T and T is the variable here, okay? It's the variable. T is the variable and we have such a matrix A one one t it's a function of t a one two t and it's like uh, a one and t and then a 
M one T and finally A M N. It's an M by N matrix. Or for short, we can write like this, A, I, J, T, where we have M and N here for number of rows and columns. When we have a matrix of functions, okay, when we have something like this, we can do some calculus. We can talk about derivative, integral, um, okay, along with uh, basic operations like product sum. Uh, right, so there is one question here. Determine A times B means uh, we multiply this two and we get another matrix, right? Uh, so you can say C, uh, you find the determinant of that matrix. And in order to do that, A and B must be of the same size. They must be both square matrices with the same size. Okay, so here maybe I should say A is a matrix of square matrix like this, B is a square matrix like this. Then A cross B, A times B is a matrix N by N matrix. Okay, All right. any other question? Okay, well, um, let's talk about the operations here. Uh, we differentiate the matrix, some operations. First, let's talk about the derivative. These are easy operations. So if you know what's the derivative of a function, you know the derivative of a matrix because you do this a bit you do you take the derivative term wise okay uh, you take the derivative of each entry uh, da dt derivative of this matrix is basically um you take the derivative of each entry so it's like d a i j t over dt so it is this matrix it's again a matrix Uh, you differentiate each entry. And there is one more operation in integral, right? Integral is basically you integrate each term. Um, so it's going to be integral of, sorry, integral of a t dt is basically you integrate a i, oops. A I J T D T. And you look at the matrix with this entries. All right. Let me do an example. Let's say A of T is sine T e to the t, t plus one, t square. It's a matrix with function coefficients, function entries, and the derivative, or maybe let's write like this, a prime t, is you differentiate each entry, so it's gonna be cosine t, e to the t, one, two t, okay? So this is the derivative. Let's also do the integral. Um, integral of a t dt, you integrate each entry here. Uh, the integral of sine t is minus cosine t, e to the t, t squared over two plus t, t cube 
over three. So this is the integral of the matrix. Any question? In integral, don't we have constants? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, right, right, right. Maybe I should say here. Uh, okay. This is an indefinite integral. Uh, we put constant everywhere here. Um, when you put a constant here everywhere, it's basically a constant matrix. So maybe let's write here. This is a constant matrix two by two, okay? Constant. Matrix. Okay, good. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, we also have a product rule like in functions. So let me write this. This is also important effect. You can check this yourself. Um, product rule for matrices. So basically it says the derivative of um, you multiply two matrices. These are uh, matrices with function entries, okay? It's equal to, maybe let's write like this, A prime times B plus A times B prime, okay? Here, A is a matrix with, that's right here. A is a matrix with uh, variable T, B is the same, variable T, okay? So um, the product rule here, it remains two uh, in, in the setting of matrices. Question, comment? All right, let's now talk about the system of Algebraic equations first, then we will talk about system of differential equations. So system of algebraic equations. Now we will use what we learned here for matrices to solve the system of algebraic equations. So let's say you are given a system of equation like this, A, 1, 1, x1 plus a1, 2, x2. So here a1, 1, a1, 2, these are real numbers. x1, x2, these are the unknowns, okay? a1, n, x, n is equal to b1, okay? And Let's write another um, equation, a two one x one plus a two two x two plus a two n x n is equal to b two. And you go like this. You have, let's say, m equations, m one, x1 plus a m n x n is equal to b n b n so uh, this is what this is a basically a system of equations which is a system of linear equations algebraic linear equations. We don't have any differential here. It's not a differential equation. There is no derivative, okay? It's a system of linear equation with unknowns. X1, X2, Xn, and here, a, i, j, 
and B i or B j. B i, let's say. These are constants. Okay. And you want to solve the system of equations for x1, x2, and xn. So what are x1, x2, xn that satisfies this equation? So you are given this constants, a, i, j, and b, i, and you would, you would like to solve the system of equations. Well, the nice thing is you can, you can convert this into the language of matrices. So let's call this system star. We can write this as, uh, we write star by the following uh, a much compact way. Um, it's going to be like uh, A11, A12. We write this matrix A1n, A21, A22, A2n. And you continue like this AMN1, sorry. AM. And this is your matrix, okay, for this system. We take the coefficients, those coefficients, okay, make a matrix with this coefficients, okay? And then the variable here, the unknown, is a vector x1, x2, xn, this is a vector and it's equal to this one. Another vector, B1, B, M. Okay, so you multiply this two, okay, it's an, you can multiply, right? Because it's an M by, n matrix and this is n by one matrix and the resulting matrix is m by m by one so this represents star here okay so instead of star we will use this matrix representation All right this one you can see they are the same because when you multiply these two matrices, you take this row and this column, and it actually gives this one, okay? Is equal to B1 here. For the second equation here, it follows from this row and this column. You multiply these two vectors, and you have B2 somewhere here, and so on, okay? Question, comment. Well, this says what? This says basically um, you have here a matrix, let's call it A, and this is a vector, let's call it X vector, and this is another vector, let's call it B. So it's basically, AX is equal to B. You know what A and B are, and you want to find X. To find X here, to find X, the vector, uh, we have two methods. There are two ways.
The first one is Gaussian el uh, elimination. We will talk about this next time. Okay, Gaussian elimination method. Second one, well, find the inverse. of a in that case if you find the inverse of a this you can solve it like x is equal to multiply both sides with the inverse both sides with a inverse and you get the following a times a inverse is identity so we get on the left hand side x only on the right hand side it's going to be um, a inverse times b okay so x is given by that but the difficult thing is here the finding the inverse is not easy if you have dimension more than three okay or three or more than three um, for two by two matrix the inverse is easy you can find the inverse easily but uh, for larger dimensions, higher dimensions, finding the inverse of a matrix is not an easy task. So what we do is we, most of the time, we use Gauss elimination method. This is uh, easier than the second one when you have a larger dimension, okay? So in the le next lecture, we will talk about this Gauss elimination method, um, elementary row operations. We will talk about those and we will do many examples um, and solve some system of equations. And later we will use this to solve the system of uh, differential equations. All right, any question, any comment? I will stop here. So if you don't have any question, um, do we have a chance to get to the first page the first of today? Page. Of today. This? Ah, uh, yes. When we say that, and I'm, I'm talking about these sets, by the way, when we say that x1 prime is f1 of x1, x2, and Mm -hmm. uh, that goes to x and t. So these are like multivariable functions, these f's. Right. They are multivariable functions. Like, like for instance, it can be like uh, cosine t times x1 plus x2 plus xn minus x1, x2, something like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this f1, f2, these are functions, um, depends on uh, m plus one variable. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Okay. Uh, see you next uh, Tuesday. Bye. Iyi günler hocam. İyi günler.